Hello and welcome to All Top Fives. Recently we looked at five of the most haunted places in the United Kingdom, and before that I covered five of the most haunted places in the wider world. This time, however, I'm going to look at a few well-known and not so well-known ghostly sites in the United States of America and the legends told about them. Number 5. The Myrtles Plantation Built in 1796 in the state of Louisiana, the Myrtles Plantation has traded hands between different families over the decades and centuries. Throughout this time, during which it was remodeled, many adults and children lived and died in the house there, some naturally and some actually murdered. That's one official murder and several others that were rumored. It's no wonder then that a house with such a morbid history has become known as one of America's most haunted, a status helped along greatly by the latest owner, Francis Myers, who wrote a book about the hauntings in the plantation, which is now a bed and breakfast. There are believed to be at least a dozen spirits that roam the home, with the legend of Chloe being the most well known. Chloe was allegedly a slave owned by the owners of the house in the early 1820s. It's thought that she was caught eavesdropping one day through a keyhole on her master's business meetings and had her ear cut off as punishment, and she wore a green turban to cover her disfigurement. As revenge, Chloe is thought to have baked a birthday cake containing highly poisonous oleander leaves to kill the whole family of five. Now only the mother and two daughters ate the cake, and after their deaths Chloe was found out by the other slaves who reportedly hanged her and threw her into the Mississippi River. It's the green turbaned ghost of Chloe that people still claim to see to this day. Another popular legend is that of an attorney who lived on the plantation in the 1800s. His name was William Winter and he was shot in cold blood by an unidentified assailant in 1871. He managed to stumble his way up some of the stairs searching for help until he finally bled to death on the 17th step of the staircase. His last footsteps are still heard today in ghostly fashion. Myriad other stories are told of the Myrtles Plantation, including a Native American girl haunting her burial ground, a bloodstain that refuses to be cleaned, and a mirror that is haunted by the ghosts of Chloe's victims. A really haunted house that deserves its place in my list. Number 4. Waverly Hills Sanatorium In 1910, this sanatorium was opened in Louisville, Kentucky to look after tuberculosis patients. It's known as one of the most haunted hospitals in the USA and has been investigated by numerous ghost hunter programs. One popular legend surrounding the Waverly Hills Sanatorium that has been told by locals for years is that of Room 502. It is said that while the sanatorium was still in operation, a nurse working there at the time had been having an affair with the establishment's owner. She had fallen pregnant by him and then developed tuberculosis herself. Some people say that she was overcome by the shame and the misery and she hanged herself. Others say she was murdered, but all versions point to one thing, that it happened in room 502, and she was found allegedly hanging by a loop of light bulb wire. A horrible death, and it's one whose victim still apparently stalks the room where it happened. Being a hospital of sorts, it's estimated that thousands of people died there, with some people calculating over 8,000 deaths. This is a very high and quite sad death rate, and it's no wonder that people claim there are so many spirits haunting the building. When the British TV series Most Haunted visited the sanatorium for 24 hours, they claim that they saw and heard many different types of paranormal activity, along with one crew member allegedly receiving scratches from an invisible attacker. Of course, there have been several other TV shows focusing on this location as well, often at Halloween, and a horror film, Death Tunnel, was filmed on location there. Brilliantly, there are plans in the works to redevelop the Waverly Hills Sanatorium into a four-star hotel, focusing on clientele looking to stay in a haunted place. I'm not sure I'd stay there, however. Do you reckon you would? Number 3. Bobby Mackey's Music World Here's an odd and controversial one. Bobby Mackey's Music World has become known as the most haunted nightclub in America. Located in Wilder, Kentucky, there are countless urban legends told about hauntings of the property. The country singer, Bobby Mackey, who owns Music World, is the first to claim that the site is haunted, stating that originally the land on which the nightclub is now built used to be a slaughterhouse before it became a seedy roadhouse in the 20th century. Bobby and others claim that it's massively haunted, owing to its murders, suicides and dark practices over the many years. 
One story tells of a dancer who worked at the roadhouse built there in the 1950s called Johanna. She was reportedly pregnant at the time when she committed suicide by poisoning herself after her father had hanged her lover in the dressing room. She still believed to haunt the location of her death. Another ghost is said to be that of Pearl Bryan, a young woman also pregnant who was found brutally decapitated near the site in the late 19th century. Although the men who committed the murder were caught, tried and hanged, there are many stories that pertain to them being Satanists who threatened to haunt everyone involved in their trial. They now allegedly haunt the nightclub along with their victim, Pearl. An even more incredible claim is that of a gateway or a portal to hell hidden somewhere in the music world, which is supposed to explain the high levels of paranormal activity there. All these claims are controversial though, as I mentioned, as none of the reports of ghosts can be traced back to any official documentation or evidence either that proved that they existed in life or that corroborates their stories. It's thought that the majority of the spooky tales were fabricated as a sustained promotional publicity stunt by the owner, Bobby Mackey, to increase interest in his nightclub. What do you reckon? Number 2. The West Virginia State Penitentiary Now this list wouldn't be complete without a prison featuring in it somewhere. Operational between 1876 and 1995, and then decommissioned and replaced by another jail nearby, the West Virginia State Penitentiary today is a tourist location and training facility. It was built in Moundsville, West Virginia and held thousands of prisoners during its active years. Although it was considered to have fairly good quality conditions in the early 20th century, it slowly became overcrowded and murder, rape, fighting and riots became much more commonplace. In fact, 36 murders were committed there, including the notorious homicide of R. D. Wall in 1929, who was stabbed repeatedly to death by a gang of inmates with blunt homemade knives. Adding to the atmosphere of violence and death, official records state that nearly 100 men were executed at West Virginia State Penitentiary. That's about two a year until the state outlawed the death penalty. The most common method was by hanging up until 1949, and the public were able to attend many of these. In fact, one larger inmate was gruesomely decapitated by his own weight when the trapdoor was released while he was being hanged. The rest of the executions were carried out in the electric chair called Old Sparky, which, in a cruel twist of fate, had actually been designed by an inmate at the penitentiary at the time. All this death often attracts stories of paranormal activity, and indeed people and researchers flock to the prison for tours of its dark, violent cells. Among the most common of the ghostly reports is the legend that the prison is built on a Native American burial ground. In fact, this story was around even in the 1930s when the prison was still in its heyday. Other stories told by the guards include countless ghostly prisoners who had previously lost their lives there unexplained voices and spooky noises, and areas of extreme cold known as cold spots throughout the complex. The most disturbing repeated report is that of a shadow man that lurks in the forgotten corners of the penitentiary with some unknown dark purpose. Definitely a scary location that I am not visiting. Number 1. Franklin Castle I've saved this one for my number one spot because of its varied, prolific and detailed ghostly history. Franklin Castle is a mansion built in 1881 by a German, Hannes Tiedemann. He moved into the property with his wife, Louisa, and together they had a son and a daughter there. Unfortunately, the family began to suffer a huge string of bad luck. In 1881, the Tiedemann's daughter, Emma, died horribly of diabetes at only 15 years old. Shortly afterward, Han's mother died in the house. Over the following few years, the Tidemans quickly had and lost three more children, which attracted suspicion. Hans decided to overhaul the mansion to make it more castle-like, as a distraction for his grieving wife Louisa, with gargoyles and a ballroom, and during this time he allegedly created many secret rooms, hidden passages and panels to access them. Louisa died of liver disease in 1895, and Hans died 13 years later of a stroke. However, during his many years living in the house, he was rumoured to have murdered several children and other young people. One story states that he hanged his niece from the rafters in the house after finding her in bed with his grandson, and another claims that Hans murdered a servant girl, reportedly his mistress, after she rejected his affections. 
He tied the girl up, which apparently strangled her, and she died there in one of the bedrooms. After the house had gone to the German Socialist Party in 1913, many stories claimed that these new owners were actually Nazi spies who were gunned down in a secret room deep within the castle, further adding to the building's death toll. With this violent and disturbing history, it's no surprise that ghostly activity has been rife in Franklin Castle for years. The most popular legend is that of the woman in black who roams around the mansion's upper floors, often sighted staring out from the tower window. Could this ghost be that of Louise Tideman? Stories of ghost children have been told about the house even since the 1930s. One nurse who was taking care of one of the owners at the time recalls that she would lie awake at night hearing the terrifying sound of a young child crying, despite there being no children in the house. Similarly, the children of some later owners in the 1960s asked their mother for an extra cookie to take back upstairs for a little crying girl that they had met. The mother never found a crying girl. These children are thought to be the Tideman children who all met grisly ends. Between these stories came more reports of organ music, ghostly footsteps, voices and noises floating down from the upper floors, and crying. The mother of the children who befriended the crying girl requested a priest exercise the house. He actually refused, but informed them that there was definitely an evil presence and that they should leave. The mother then turned to a group of psychic researchers who couldn't help her and all fled the house in fright. These events kept on for decades and the Franklin Castle kept changing hands as people moved in and left again quickly. It still stands to this day and plans are in place to renovate it into a more modern family home. I just wonder if the ghostly Tiderman family will haunt the new occupants as they have done for nearly a century. And that's it from all top fives for this week. I know I missed out such classic places as the Amityville House and others, but I wanted to highlight some perhaps lesser known haunted locations with just as much ghostly activity. I hope you've enjoyed the ones I've put together for you. Remember we all have differing opinions, so just be polite when you're discussing these in the comments, I don't like having arguments on the channel. If you'd like to subscribe, you can hit the subscribe button and you'll get a new video every Tuesday. Alternatively, you can just like the video, in which case that'll help me and help other people find the video as well. So, peace and love to each and every one of you, and I'll see you all next time on All Top Fives.